is Mr. Gautam Kanna, CEO, PD Hinduja National Hospital and Medical Research Center. Dr. Gautam Kanna is a CEO in, of the PD Hinduja Hospital and Medical Research Center, Mumbai. In fact, he is also responsible for leading the growth of the healthcare vertical for the Hinduja group as a whole in the country. Prior to this role, Mr. Gautam Kanna was the executive director and country business leader of the 3M healthcare businesses in India and Sri Lanka. He was also responsible for corporate affairs for 3M. He was a member of the managing committee of 3M India region. Mr. Kanna has over 24 years of industry experience and has been working with 3M for more than 22 years internationally and in India. He has also worked with a large financial uh, industrial business houses in Mumbai prior to joining 3M. He was the chairperson of FIKI Medical Device Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, bring your hands together for Mr. Gautam Kanna, who will speak to us today on improving healthcare service delivery to India's poorest, and that is the key to healthcare innovation. Mr. Gautam Kanna, please. Thank you. After such a passionate presentation, on hair transplants and by Dr. Joshi. I am pretty drab, by the way, so I have no such interesting stories to share. I have no uh, nice pictures like what uh, Dr. Khanna showed. I have none, none of those. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the healthcare industry, and I think it's a little relevant here because many of you here are clinicians, and some of you are from the industry, the pharma industry. So I'm providing a different view, which is on the provider side. And uh, let's just talk a few things about the overall healthcare. And many things have been spoken about it, but let me put it this way. What Dr. Joshi talked about, that Brand India is uh, winning, yes, and I would, couldn't agree more because, of course, we have... Uh, anyway, it's not visible. Of course, we have quite a few gaps and everyone knows about it and you know we talked about shortage of everything and everything is short in India which is true but however look at the positive sides there is a progress and we talk, and he talked about excellent secondary and tertiary care and our Dr. Pandey is an example he talked about talked about the lower costs and of course talked about which probably he touched upon was the innovative models and I'm hoping that I will talk about that so I think it's a little bit of a balance between the two. And I'm not so sure that, you know, which we, and I speak at some other forums too, that people talk about shortage of doctors, shortage of nurses. Let's be realistic. If tomorrow we're going to double the number of medical schools, double the number of PG seats, and so on and on, we are not going to fix this problem for the next 20 years. So it's, that's not the solution. So now the way to go about it, in my opinion, is to just accept that this is it, there is a problem, what do I do about it? So let's just go through that. But before we move, there are some positives in Indian healthcare. And there is Dr. Joshi's affluenza. So Dr. Joshi's affluenza is also driving because one of the things, you know, I spoke to some politicians and some, uh, some uh, other people, senior people in the government, and I said, how come you promised that you will increase the expend healthcare expenditure, you will do this, you will do that. What happened? So he told me very frankly, he said, listen, right now my focus is on getting the economy up. I want to increase the income levels. I want the industry to grow. Then I'm going to talk about healthcare. Fair point. And the other thing which he didn't say, but it's my opinion, is that today healthcare does not win you elections or no healthcare does not make you lose elections. So it's not a political agenda. So the moment it becomes a political agenda, you will see uh, more emphasis on healthcare. The other positive thing, healthcare insurance is increasing. A few years ago, we used to talk about healthcare insurance was in the low single digits. Now it's close to 25. Now the issue is, I have a view on this. Of course, 25% of people are insured, but in my view, they're underinsured. I mean, two lakh rupees insurance for a bypass surgery is not good at all. So, but that is a, there is a significant growth in that. 
government policies are improving. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. IT is becoming very, very important. A lot of opportunities and what we hear, you know, my view is that sometimes we are in the industry. We are not able to see the trend and somebody who has the money sees the trend. So who has the money now? All these VC funds, all these PE, and, and he was an example of enhanced clinics. They have seen the money is following the opportunity. So obviously there is an opportunity there. And of course, our, uh, our healthcare facilities are really, really cheap compared to the quality we give. The challenges. Indian healthcare has many, many challenges. And uh, just I would like to put it in a triangle, which is the triangle of access, affordability, and quality. Although I couldn't agree more on the quality side that there is quality, but I think it is in certain pockets. Few pockets in few metros, they have qualities. Few professionals give quality. Rest of the people, I'm not so sure. And he gave examples of ads talking about, you know, how misleading they are. And that is what is happening in the real India. So there is an issue about quality. The other, other thing about the affordability. Of course, people can afford, but I think the problem is we are fixing the wrong problem. We are saying, I need to make it cheaper. And my question to you, and we have a renowned surgeon here, is if Dr. Pandey, when he treats a patient, is he gonna see whether it's an Indian body, it's an American body? No. It's a heart, he has to treat it. And so why would he not give the excellent or the best possible treatment? He would. So for that, he would need the best possible equipment, best possible care, best possible infrastructure, and so on and on. So the point of if I want to make it cheap, I am going to compromise quality. So the issue we need to fix is not making it cheap, but making it, making the ability to pay. So somebody needs to provide the ability to pay which is what it means that you need to have insurance and something else. In, in the other countries, the governments take a major role and they pay for healthcare, whether good or bad, whether, it, whether it's they're doing the right thing or not, I don't know, but they are taking care. In India, the government is kind of abdicating it to the private place that guys, you fix it, I have other priorities to do. So I think there is an issue of afford affordability which will continue. And access, of course, we know. There is, a, there is a problem. So how do we fix it? Everybody talked about the disease burden, but I'm not going to uh, spend time on that now. But let's talk about, sorry, let's talk about the poor and Indian healthcare. So this is a comparison. This is a study, comparison of rural India and urban India. So as you see, the expenditure, average expenditure in rural India is 15,000 rupees per person. Obviously, many people in rural India are not ill. So the, per, per, so the expenditure by rural households is pretty high on healthcare. In urban India, it is 25,000 bucks. So now, if you see the comparison below, the states which have the lowest, the highest high hospitalization costs in rural India and which the lowest, you will see that in states which have the highest hospitalization costs in villages, most of them go to private hospitals. So what does that mean? That don't they have government hospitals or they are of poor quality? Can be one of them. And where they have the lowest cost, they go to the public hospitals. So does it mean they have more public hospitals or they are good quality? For example, like, you know, Jharkhand and places like that. So this is something to be thought through. So this kind of analysis, many people do not do. Same thing about how the expenditure is happening. So the essence, and I'm, I'm not going to go, go through the data here, but what it means is that in rural areas for the poor people, sometimes the facilities exist, but the quality is so poor that they have to come to the cities or they have to go to the private hospitals. And all of us know why, and I can't, I can't see some folks here, but what I have been talking about in various government forums, and I'm going to say it again here, hopefully the voice will reach them, is the government is very good in giving capital expenditure. So when the budget came out, six new aims have been sanctioned. 
and I went on record and I wrote that time, thank you for doing that, it's a great thing, but of no help. Six aims, sometime in future, somewhere it will help. Right now what I need is operational expenditure. I need money for the hospitals to buy medicines and buy vegetables, and, uh, buy uh, f facilities, I mean the consumables and things like that. So that they are not giving, but they are spending on aims. So there's a little bit of mismatch on priorities there by the government. So what do we do? We need to think a little differently, okay? So I'm gonna share some examples. Obviously, they are not the solution because if I had all the solutions, you know, we would have fixed the problems in India, obviously not. But I'm giving some thoughts here. So first thing is, we need this attitude. And I really like this attitude. That you know the attitudes of startup, when you go there, there is always somebody who's saying, it will not work. So they're saying, fine, first idea will not work. I will keep doing until something works. And I think that is what we need in healthcare. A couple of years ago, we, in my earlier uh, avatar, we were experimenting and we tried something with CSIR for the uh, villages for healthcare. So we wanted to provide, we provided a, a solution for a rural healthcare in a container. You know the mobile containers? We said, if a village can have a cell phone tower, I will give you a hospital in that village. People said it will not work, fine it will not work. But what we did, we made two containers, put the basic stuff, right, for diagnosis and basic treatment, like a, uh, like a PHC. Those put those, took those containers and went to Mr. Jindal's constituency in Haryana, in Kethil, put it next to the cell phone tower, put our own biogas plant. So you had captive power. Through the cell phone, you had connectivity to the nearest city. And we installed everything, including biometric access. So you knew when did the doctor come, the nurse came. So it was being monitored. And of course, it did really, really well. In three months, at least a thousand people got treated there. Why it didn't work? Because you're not making money. Nobody makes money in these things. So the point is, it was a proof of concept which worked, but somebody needs to fund it. It was not too much, it was just 28 lakh rupees for one. But my point that time, and I mean we mentioned, it was mentioned by CSIR as one of the highlights. So they put it up. They said, now this is an example which has worked, now you need to scale it up. So we tried another one in some place called Lakhimpur Khiri. It's on the border of uh, UP and Nepal. Started charging 10 rupees. 10 rupees per treatment. Suddenly it worked. People started coming and so on and on. So there are, and now it's being scaled up. So there are examples like this. So I think this is the attitude we need that if this doesn't work, fine, we'll try something else till something works. So I'm going to give an example of what we do at Hinduja Hospital. It's a small thing about going, taking our vans to the rural areas. And many of you may not know, but there are tribal areas outside Thane. I mean, 100 kilometers from here, there are real tribal areas. So there they go and they uh, work and almost 50,000 people have been treated. So this is a very, very good program. It has been recognized very well. And I think examples like these can be scaled up uh, by many people and now with this mandatory CSR funding coming in, I think this is an example which could work. Second thing about mobile health. You know, I had an opportunity to be in Bangalore last week and uh, this week I was in uh, Calcutta in a management institute and all I heard was mobile startups. And then I asked and I found out there are 300, mind you, 300 startups in healthcare in the mobile space. I said, what are you guys going to do? Then we'll figure out something. We are fixing one problem. This one doesn't work, second. So out of those 300, and what are they doing? They're fixing our problems. Of what we've said, access, affordability, and quality, they're saying we will fix it. Because obviously government cannot fix it, infrastructure cannot fix it, we will fix it. So those 300 people, 300 startups. And if you see the growth of internet in the rural areas is really, really fast. To me, today, 
there are 61 million people in the rural areas who are active internet users, out of which 40 million are using on the phone. So obviously if I can reach them, we can reach healthcare through them, that is going to explode. And that is probably one way which will help us uh, reach healthcare to the rural.